PBP's presidential candidate well received in Region 9 as he continues nationwide outreach. Nagamutu, Ramjitan and Williams are the enablers of the impending constitutional crisis, says Christopher Ram. Guyanese man stabbed to death in St. Lucia. And in sport, reinforced the abandonment of third ODI between West Indies and England. These and more right now in this, our Monday, February 25, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. People's Progressive Party presidential candidate Ir Fanali is continuing his outreach across the country and was well received last week by residents of Region 9. Here are the details. People's Progressive Party presidential candidate Ir Fanali last week continued his countrywide outreach where he met with residents in Lethem and other parts of the Rupununi region. The presidential candidate visited 12 villages as part of its slew of political outreaches to the hinterland. The outreaches were intended to garner feedback from the residents and ascertain what should be placed on its campaign manifesto. Ali informed residents of the party's plans to create opportunity for youths and his intention to reverse some of the draconian tax measures. So we want to expand housing in your community. We want to create economic opportunity through improved livelihood options through agricultural support and through direct subsidies and grants that can help families, that can promote small businesses and open up new opportunity for you here in the region. Some of the common issues raised were inadequate transportation, housing, severe drug shortages and the current state of the economy. Ali is expected to continue his outreach to other parts of the country leading up to general and regional elections. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Whether you're building your dream home or an industrial building, Gafours has everything you need for your construction projects. Available are steel rods, high tensile and mild steel, BRC fabric, steel beams and columns, galvanized deckings, steel pipes, angles and channels, Z and C purlings available in 4, 6 and 8 inches, corrugated zinc sheets in 6 design profiles, asphalt roofing shingles, the perfect concrete blocks in 4 and 6 inches, cement and stone, and to beautify your building, we stock a wide range of paints, machine tinted to match any color, travel text in several shades, aluminium frame windows, curtain walls and doors, Mexican steel doors and decorative panel doors. Also available are finishing products such as PVC ceiling panels, floor and wall tiles, gypsum, MDF and cement board, laminated and bamboo floor panels, and sinks, toilet sets and cupboards. So, for your next construction project, check out your one-stop shop, Gafours, the name you can trust. John Lewis Styles, simply different. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. 
Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Attorney at law Anil Nandlal has filed to the Caribbean Court of Justice to fix an early hearing to have the President's unilateral appointment of the Chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission appeal. An application has been sent to the Caribbean Court of Justice to fix an early date for the hearing and determination of the unilateral appointment of retired Justice James Patterson as Chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. The case was filed by Attorney at Law Anil Nandlal on behalf of People's Progressive Party Executive Secretary Zulfika Mustafa. The early hearing came on the heels of the ongoing fiasco surrounding the state of readiness for elections at the Elections Commission. The chairman is yet to pronounce on the state of readiness for the holding of elections, even as the 90 days constitutional timeline evaporates. Um, secondly, we have, we, we have made an application to the Caribbean Court of Justice to fix an early date for the hearing and determination of our appeal on the issue of the unilateral appointment of the chairman of GCOM. And so we are waiting. The CCJ, I think the, the request was made a couple of days ago, so we are, we'd be urging the CCJ to immediately hear that, that uh, appeal. The Court of Appeal in October upheld the High Court ruling on President David Granger's unilateral appointment of the Chairman. The Chief Justice ruled that President David Granger was constitutionally right to appoint Patterson as Chairman of the Elections Commission. Authority at Law and Political Commentator Christopher Ram believes AFC's Moses Nagamutu and Kemra Dramtidon, along with Attorney General Marcel Williams, are the enablers of the APNU AFC government's violation of the Constitution. Alliance for Change Chairman and Minister of Public Security Kemraj Ramtatan has been taken to task for his party's silence as the President David Granger administration continues to violate the Ghana Constitution by failing to call elections following a successful no-confidence vote on December 21 and the High Court subsequently upholding the validity of that vote. Ramjitan appeared as a guest on a teleconference on Globespan 24-7 live show in New York alongside attorney at law and political commentator Christopher Ram. Ram spared no efforts in launching into Ramjitan and the government. Speaking to the posture of the government now after having conceded it lost the confidence vote of December 21, Ram is laying the blame for the charade at the feet of the Prime Minister Moses Nagamoto and Ramjitan along with the Attorney General. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. With just 24 days away from plunging into a constitutional crisis, former Speaker of the National Assembly, Ralph Ramkaran, pinpointed the international community as a sole mediator to remedy the impending crisis. Former Speaker of the National Assembly, Ralph Ramkaran, has warned of the impending crisis after March 21, the constitutional deadline for the holding of general and regional elections. He chided the Five Parties Coalition for remaining stubbornly wedded in its electoral manipulative stay in office. This, he says, came as a result of the government's inability to command majority support. The former Speaker says the fears of rigged elections have now been exacerbated by the government's current refusal to call elections. Ram Karan has ruled out the chances for the political leaders to resolve the impending constitutional crisis. 
He says the ethno-political fears are too deeply embedded in our society to permit the resolution discourse. The former speaker says it is now timely for the international community to make the final push to engineer a permanent solution to the problem. He referenced President Jimmy Carter and Baroness Valerie Amos as the outstanding international figures that can possibly remedy the looming crisis. Ram Karan pinpointed it took the stand as mediators to find a solution to prevent future political crises. Among other things, the oil wealth, a share executive governance, should be the subject of the mediation process. An elderly man was today taken into police custody after he allegedly set fire to hundreds of old tires stored in a vacant lot at Better Hope East Coast, Demerara, scorching in building and putting several others at risk. Several homes along the railway embankment at Better Hope East Coast Amarara were under threat after the man, Raymond Ali, who is said to be in his 70s, set fire to a large quantity of old tires stored on one of his properties. Residents say that a man first lit the fire sometime Friday morning, which was quelled by firefighters. However, the following day, Mashramani Day, residents claimed that the fire reignited and that a Ghana fire service was once again called to the scene. According to reports, the fire service visited the location at least seven times during the course of Saturday and Sunday, and each time they extinguished smaller flames. But about 7.30 hours today, the fire once again burst into flames, this time causing large plume of thick black smoke to circulate the entire neighborhood. Subsequent calls to the fire service initially went unsuccessful, as ranks there told callers to stop wasting their time. One neighbor, 53-year-old Sharon Sahadio, explained that the alleged perpetrator who lives alone has been out to get rid of those living at the home which he shares with his family. The father of five claimed only recently Ali had personally threatened him. Shahadio said several complaints were made to the NDC of Better Hope regarding the condition under which the owner kept the land but to no avail. This neighbor we have here, the man got three houses, right? And his land was very low. And he land filling with tile. Oh, you got land filling with tile? Watch tile. We, had to, we took out all this tile from, from the side of this building. Or this building would have gone down. But this was a born. If we were born, if, if um, we didn't take little precaution, like putting something cut by the side, we can't find a service that took long for each Meanwhile, Harun Rashid Khan, who is a representative of the Better Hope LBI NDC, confirmed that the local authority was informed of the situation and that they had made the necessary checks and did warn the individual to remove all the tires. Yes, the NDC would have taken immediate actions visiting the site myself included the councillor the chairman dr shaw the overseer the superintendent and a team of council and and the health department and serve him notice we serve him about three to four notice in terms of having those tire removed we warned him of not putting tire in the lawn we asked him to have the lawn weed and clean He's a very, very, I will say, a stubborn individual, a very disgusting resident. The man was questioned by police and was subsequently released. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security.
Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 out of value new road freedom hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Welcome back. You're still with MTV's News Update. Leader of the National Independent Party is refusing any offer to be observed in the coalition party for fear of becoming voiceless other other parties. Here's Godfrey Brooms. The National Independent Party was founded by attorney at law Safir Hussein over two decades ago. Though it has been contesting general elections since 1997, the party's support base is still low and has never secured a seat in parliament. Regardless of this fact, Hussein refuses to be observed in the coalition party. He explained his integrity must remain intact and as such, he cannot join the other parties as he will be gagged. I would not join the, a the PNC and the PUP, never at all, because of the, 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 their history and, and the, um, their ideology and particularly their bipolarity. Especially, that is what is that is how they strive. Thrive. They are their presence of the Russia in uh, in Venezuela is a threat to the Western Hemisphere, to United States, and particularly to Guyana because of the oil, oil production, eminent oil production. But Guyana government nor the opposition, none of them saying anything. They are just sitting silent. They don't. I, they are running this country. Only one way, who thief the most? That is our argument. The party leader proclaimed he will be contesting the next general elections alone and expects to make a mark. I will reform the judiciary, reform the education, have education reform, have a judicial um, reformation, uh, reform. His statement about being stifled in the coalition comes against the backdrop of a former AFC parliamentarian, Charandas Prasad, who claimed the AFC is voiceless. He voted in favor of the opposition-sponsored confidence motion, which toppled the government under the guise that his party reps have become quote-unquote yes-men to the APNU. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. 
One suspect is assisting police with investigations into the fatal stabbing yesterday morning of Guyanese national Michael Poran at Bakteli Castries, the St. Lucia Times reported. Nelville Antley, a friend of the deceased, told the newspaper that Puran, 27, was a very good person who was outgoing and liked to dress. He disclosed that about 5 a.m., neighbors brought him news about the fatal stabbing. Atle said he and the deceased were acquainted with the suspect in the fatal stabbing. Atle said, according to reports he received, Puran went to a party near where they lived and the suspect started troubling the deceased and following them around. He said, based on his information, the two suspects started wrestling. He explained that a mutual friend advised Puran to leave the scene, but as he held the guy in his national, he realized that he was still bleeding. Atil said the mutual friend heard footsteps and thinking that the assailant was after him as well, left Puran, who had by the time collapsed and ran. He said Puran went to St. Lucia from Guyana in 2014. Guyana has requested help from South Africa in undergoing mining to increase gold extraction. The country peaked in gold production in 2016 with a recorded 712,000 ounces. Guyana is seeking to increase its revenue in the gold sector with the inclusion of underground mining. Already, Aurora Gold Mines, a Canadian company, has proffered that it will complete an underground mine in 2019. But the country itself wants the knowledge of such an operation and has requested external assistance. When Natural Resources Minister Rafael Trotman and a team from the semi-autonomous agencies under the ministry met with a delegation from South Africa today, Acting Commissioner of the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, GGMC, Diane MacDonald, requested help. She noted that South Africa has the expertise and decades of practice that would be useful to Guyana. Guyana peaked in its yearly extraction in 2016 when 712 ounces of gold were extracted. While the gold sector remains booming, there are some issues in the mining arena. Minister Trotman pointed out that there are frequent raids in mining pits by poachers, some of whom are children. Additionally, Persons are still using mercury and are contaminating rivers that some indigenous folks depend on for drinking purposes. Reporting for MTV News Update, Quatfi Brooms. Staff and commissioners of the Local Government Commission as of Monday, February 25, have been paid their outstanding salaries for the months of January and February. This is according to Chairman of the Commission, Mortimer Mingo. During a telephone interview with this newscast, the chairman of the Local Government Commission, Mortimer Mingo, indicated that all payments, including those outstanding for office rental, electrical, water, and Wi-Fi, have been paid. While refraining from divulging too much information, Mingo explained that all activities at the Local Government Commission will continue as per normal. The Local Government Commission is home to some 27 employees. On January 31, 2019, it was made public that staff of the Local Government Commission and the commissioners were not paid their salaries. On top of that, a commission running low on finances could not afford to pay for its basic utility expenses and office supplies leading into the month of February. When questioned regarding the reasons behind the late payments, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Communities during a meeting with the chairman and commissioners indicated that the Local Government Commission had expended a large amount of allocated finances within a short period of time. Dismissing this claim, the Commission during a press engagement in February 15 related that it had only expended what was budgeted for the stipulated period. The Commission believed that a move to withhold salaries and other payments to staff and commissioners was a blatant attack aimed at stymieing its work. It was during that engagement that the Commission announced its move to shut down all operations until the issue was resolved. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. A 20-year-old Guyanese man has been charged in Trinidad with murdering Shiguana's double spender, Thiru Pai Jagisar. According to a report in the Trinidad Newsday, the murder suspect was arrested by police at the Piaco Airport in Trinidad last week when he, along with a woman, tried boarding a flight that was bombed for Guyana. 
Police from the Homicide Bureau Region 3 have released the 52-year-old Guyanese woman who was held with the suspect. She is a close relative of Jagisar who was shot to death last Monday at Sushela Drive, Chase Village in Chiguanas, the news they reported. At about 2 a.m. on Tuesday, security personnel at the Piaco Airport arrested them while trying to get on the plane to Guyana. Police learned that hours earlier, between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m., Jagisar was shot and killed. A few days ago, legal officer P.C. Corwin Lewis from the Bureau submitted a file to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. On Friday evening, Deputy DPP Joan Honor Paul advised police to charge the man and release the woman. The suspect was expected to appear in the Chiguanas Magistrates Court today, the news they reported. Natural Resources Minister Rafael Trotman has informed that the Russian bauxite company Rosal should reinstate all 61 workers they dismissed over a week ago. The company sacked the workers after the strike for better wages. Russian bauxite company Rosal flexed its muscles a few days ago, laying off 61 employees after they went on strike for an increase in their wages and salaries. The company had considered and granted approval for a 1% increase, much to the dismay of the long-serving employees who had been calling for a 16% increase two years ago. As their request was denied, the workers decided to pursue industrial action and down their tools, which was met with a letter of dismissal and a notice to vacate the company's property. The Ministries of Natural Resources and Social Protection have since been in talks with the company, but the workers have not regained employment. Russell claimed that the dismissal was necessary as the company is losing financially. However, Natural Resources Minister Rafael Trotman is optimistic that the workers will be recalled. But it is my expectation that um, <clears throat> the workers will all be reinstated. Mm -hmm. The 6-1. Mm -hmm. That I think nothing short of that is expected. Further, Trotman affirmed that a strong signal needs to be sent as nearly every biennial, there is some major issue in the bauxite industry. The status quo can't continue. That is that every two or three years is an eruption. Mm -hmm. The union, I believe, is validly elected and should be okay. respected. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to have uh, a normal um, cycle of industrial relations. And of course, has to look at its future in Guyana and whether it wants to invoke force majeure or whether the government of Guyana wishes to review the license altogether. Reporting for MTV News Update, Quadfree Brooms. Here is Ratish Lakan with this week's SAR Technology Wrap. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. As always, I'm your host Rajesh Lakhan along with Yannick Sobers. And this week we'll be continuing down the line of security. Thank you, Rajesh. So at Star Computers, we're always big on security and protecting your home and your business. So we have a lot of different um, items that can be able to help you do that. We have cameras, we have alarm systems, and also we have uh, metal detectors, which can be very um, useful in different cases. You know, you may have um, high traffic volume in different areas. It may be a hospital, it may be a ministry, you know, different places an airport even and today we're going to actually demonstrate how this um, item works and we're going to tell you a little bit more about the specs but first let me just go into some of the specs go ahead tell us about it all right so the metal detector as you can see is portable and it's very sensitive it it has different functions it can light up to let you know that there's a uh, metal being detected or it can also give you a vibration so instead of you know giving you an awareness or starting an alarm you can actually have it on the vibration feature and that can tell you well okay you know something's been picked up there and it's pretty handy it's not very heavy it has about um, 40 hours of battery life when you use it um, it also has a removable battery that you can charge outside or inside yeah mm -hmm. so it's very very um, affordable how, the size of object, how small can it pick up um, very very small I'm glad that you asked that we're actually gonna do a little um, demo so persons can see exactly how it works all right Great, go ahead. All right, good. So right now we have one of our staffs here, Chanela, and she's going to demonstrate how the metal detector works. All right. Go ahead. 
good so as you can see here it's actually vibrating right now we have done the vibration feature so it's picking up the flash drive the flash drive is actually metal but if there is anything you know hidden and so on it can also pick that up now she's gonna put it on the alarm so you're gonna get an indication a sound to let you know that you know something's being picked up here very very simple and there you had it a live demonstration of the metal detector Yannick apart from that is there anything else you want to say to the viewers yes Rajesh we want to say thank you to all our viewers for continuing to support the Star Tech Rock show also if you'd like to see a live demo of the product you can come in and you can talk with me or any one of the salespersons here great thank, well, you. thank you Yannick and that's it for this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap do join us next week Monday for another edition Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. Sankar's Auto Works. Exceptional service. GBTI is your Guyanese bank. A bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Peace on windows and doors. Fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166.
Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. England's third ODI against West Indies is a washout after constant rain forced the match to be abundant without a ball being bowled in Grenada. The covers came off the pitch briefly as England won a toss, which had been delayed by more than an hour, and elected to bowl with the series all square at 1-1. But they were put back moments later. Wrong staff removed the covers briefly as the prospect of a match reduced to 30 overs each was considered, but then the showers returned and the match was eventually called off. England were said to be without Ben Stokes, who rolled his ankle practicing boundary catches on the eve of the match. He is replaced in the name of side by Alex Hales. England also recorded Chris Wokes, who was fit but rested for the second ODI in Barbados, as part of plans to manage his knee problem, meaning Tom Curran was omitted. West Indies, meanwhile, had selected an on-chain side to one which defeated England in their last encounter. Still in cricket, let's now tell you that all-rounder Andrew Russell has been recalled to the West Indies squad for the fourth and fifth ODIs against England in place of injured Kiva Roach. While a knee issue might limit Russell's bowling duties, Chief Selector Courtney Brown believes that his batting at the death would be an asset to the side. Roach had been sidelined from the ongoing ODI series against England with a stress reaction to his back. Russell's return means West Indies could fill a full-strength side in the lead-up to the World Cup in England. Russell was playing in the Pakistan Super League for Molten Sultans, but joined the Windy squad earlier today for the third ODI. Russell has played just one ODI against Bangladesh in Guyana last year. The fourth ODI is set to kick off in Grenada on Wednesday, while the fifth will be held in Groisley on Saturday, March 2. The updated squad includes Jason Holder, Fabian Allen, Devinja Bishu, Darren Bravo, Chris Gale, Sherman Hetmeyer, Shai Hope, Evan Lewis, Ashley Nurse, Kimo Paul, Nicholas Puran, Rothman Powell, Andrew Russell, and Oshin Thomas. Chelsea Griffith reporting for MTV Sports Update. The International Cricket Council says there is no indication the World Cup match between India and Pakistan in Manchester will not go ahead. The match on June 16 is no doubt after a Pakistan-based militant group took responsibility for a suicide attack in Indian administered Kashmir this month. There have been calls for some Indians from India to boycott the game at Old Trafford. The ICC said they are monitoring the situation with their members, adding that their thoughts are with everyone who has been affected by this terrible incident. Sport, in particular cricket, has been wonderful ability to bring people together and unite communities, and they will work with their members going forward on the basis. The ICC also said there is no indication that any matches at the World Cup will not go ahead as planned. Playing their first International Basketball Federation America's pre-qualifiers, Ghana's national senior men's basketball team finished with a record of one win and three losers in their third and final group game in Colombia. Despite finishing strongly with a 73 for 65 win over Bolivia, two massive losses against Paraguay 93 for 53 and hosts Colombia 114 for 68 held the Guyanese team back from reaching to the final round of qualification for the 2021 tournament. In the win over Bolivia, Anthony Moe, Kevin Wiggins and skipper Stanton Rose top scored for the win as Guyana hit 40% of their attempted field goals. In their loss to Colombia, top scorer Anthony Moe finished the game with 17 points while Wiggins and Rose bagged 16 points each. Guyana lost their powerhouse forward Delroy James who recently led his team AEK Athens to victory in the FIBA Intercontinental Cup two weeks ago due to an expired Guyanese passport. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. The Ghana Boxing Association has shortlisted six boxers to be selected for the Panam Games qualifiers scheduled for April, while three pugilists have been put on standby list. Young phenomenon Kevin Alicock and Desmond Amsterdam, who defeated their Trinidadian opponents in the international bouts of the recently concluded Patrick Ford Memorial Boxing Tournament, headlines the shortlisted boxers. The shortlisted team includes Kevin Alicock, Desmond Amsterdam, Colin Lewis, Jamal Eastman, Mark Ember Pierre, and Sean Griffith. 
The standby list includes Claremont Gibson, Aston Niles and Julius Kesney. The coaches include Terence Poole, Francisco Roldan, Serbert Blake, James Walcott, Clinton Moore and Gregory Court. Training is set for 5 hours 30 in the mornings and 15 hours in the afternoons. The first session will start in the morning in the National Park, while afternoon sessions will be held at the Six Head Gym in All Boys Town. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. Now for some news in rugby. Bath Lock Charlie Ewells have replaced the injured Courtney Laws and an England training squad for a camp in Oxford this week. With Laws ruled out for the rest of the Six Nations, Ewells, who has 10 caps, could feature against Italy on Saturday, March 9. The 25 players will assemble in Oxford on Tuesday for the four-day camp. Similar to last year, the Georgia national team will train against Eddie Jones' side on Wednesday and Thursday. Second row Marley Ithajo will continue his recovery with England during the Six Nations follow week, while injured flanker Sam Onerful and injured bank Anthony Watson will both join up with the squad for medical checks. After impressive victories over Ireland and France, England's hopes of winning a Grand Slam were wrecked in Cardiff as Wales came from behind to win 21-13. However, England boss Eddie Jones says his players will bounce back as they attempt to win the championship. As well as losing Marco Vanilla and Lawis for the rest of the Six Nations, Hooker Dylan Harley will have surgery on his knee problem this week and will play in part of the tournament. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back. You're still at MTV's news update. Now for some news in the region. Venezuelan soldiers who defected into Colombia on Saturday say they free for safety of their families under President Nicolas Maduro's government. Speaking exclusively to the BBC's Orla Gurren, one defector age 23 says he's worried forces loyal to the president may lash out against his family. More than 100 soldiers are said to have defected, most during deadly clashes over aid deliveries on Saturday. Tensions were high after President Maduro sent troops to block roads and bridges at the borders of neighboring Brazil and Colombia, where they found the medicines deliveries organized by the U.S. were set to enter the country. On the international scene, 58 former U.S. national security officials are set to rebuke the President Donald Trump's national emergency declaration to build a border wall. Their joint statement with reportedly say there is no factual basis for an emergency at the U.S.-Mexico border. Former officials from both parties have signed a letter including United Nations Ambassador Thomas Pickering and Secretary of State Mandolin Albert. Mr. Trump declared an emergency after Congress refused to pay for the wall. The statement as reported by the Washington Post says under no plausible assessment of the evidence, there is a national emergency today that entitles the president to tap into funds appropriate for other purposes to build a wall at a certain border. The officials also note that contrary to Mr. Trump's repeated claims of an illegal crossing crisis involving violent criminals and drugs, border crossings are at the lowest point in decades and most illicit substances cross through legal ports of entry. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 814. Let's turn our attention to the Denmark Harbour Bridge and the Barbies River Bridge schedules.
a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. PPP's presidential candidate will receive in Region 9 as he continues nationwide outreach. Nagamutu, Ramjitan and Williams are the enablers of the impending constitutional crisis, says Christopher Ram. Ghani's man stopped to death in St. Lucia. And in sport, reinforced abandonment of third ODI between West Indies and England. Qatar rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.